Well, welcome everybody. Uh, today is the second edition of the Studium Digitale. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about how to do object-oriented programming in Python, and we're going to focus on building code that's sustainable, easy to maintain, and things that you can do in a collaborative fashion. But we're going to mainly focus on what it means to actually be doing object-oriented programming. Um, but we have a schedule today. Uh, we're already to about 1.15, but we are going to start with a little bit of an introduction to what is object-oriented programming. Then we're going to have some coffee while we do that, I hope. Then we'll talk about Git. Uh, who here has not used Git before? A couple of you haven't used Git, and that's fine. Um, we'll go through it fairly slowly, but we're only going to deal with a very small subset of the functionality of Git. And this is mainly so we can build out a workflow that will help us program efficiently, and it'll help us do our job as humanists, our job as scholars, more efficiently. Because one problem that I've had in programming for my research is often uh, I'm very disorganized. And I'll have one piece of code in one place and another piece of code in another place, and I'll copy things around, and I'll lose track of what the most up-to-date version is, and it's very inefficient. What we're going to be talking about today is a more efficient way of dealing with this. So 115 to 2 is going to be a focus on Git. Then we're going to move forward and we're going to talk about classes and inheritance. So um, this is the actual process of making objects in Python. Uh, at 3, there will be, or 3 or 3.15, there's going to be a coffee and uh, snack break. And then we'll continue on with classes and inheritance. And then we'll spend the last part of this time actually learning how to create a library. That is, how do we set our code up so we can install it into our Python directories so we don't need to be copying things all over the place. And we'll get to that towards the end. Uh, and then there are drinks at the pack house after this. OK? Um, this is not a strict, a strict schedule, except we will break for coffee no matter what. Um, I expect that some parts are going to go a lot faster than others. I set it up so I wouldn't have a whole lot to talk about, because I think it's going to be more valuable to answer your questions. Uh, it's going to be more valuable to work together in building some code towards the end of this. So we'll see where we get up to the end of this. Uh, so for anybody who is here who wants to do this workshop, I imagine almost all of you have the needed software installed already. You need Python 3. Now, I prefer the Anaconda distribution of Python, but the actual distribution you use doesn't really matter that much. Um, because nothing that we're going to be doing today actually requires anything that's not in the Python, Python standard library. And you'll need to have Git installed. Uh, now, you don't necessarily need to use Git, but I want to introduce it to you because it is a very, very useful thing to do, to know how to use. So if you go to anaconda.com slash download, um, you can download the Anaconda distribution of Python and install it. Um, this is a scientific computing distribution of Python. It's the one that I teach in my classes. I think. It comes with most of the features that the average person will need, and you won't need to do too much installing of extra libraries. So um, if you have this installed, then you know, this will basically set you up. So go ahead, download it, install it, but we won't get to actually using it immediately. So Git is also uh, important. Let's see here. Um, that's not it. Git uh, is if you go to git-scm.com, you can download it. This is a command line tool that will uh, help you keep track of changes in your code. Okay, it's version control software, and there are only about six or seven commands that are really critical for what we're going to be doing today, and in fact, only three that we'll probably actively use. Um, but we'll get into what this is and why we would be interested in doing it here in a moment. Um, so if you don't have that stuff installed, go ahead and install it. But really, the only critical thing here is Python, uh, because that's what you're going to need to follow along here. 
Now, let's go ahead and go back here. So the focus here is reusable and sustainable coding. So how can you save yourself time not having to retype code in uh, the scripts that you write over and over again? When I first started using coding for my research, I found myself writing the same 40 lines again and again every time I did a new project. So I needed a way to try to organize things so I wasn't having to do that. And I also didn't want to have to do any copy and pasting. The other question is, if you make a big mistake in your code, how can you fix it? Uh, this is where Git comes in handy. Uh, by letting you keep track of when your code is actually working, when you make big changes to it, you can always go back to a version that worked. And it also will help you share your work. Uh, if you're familiar with GitHub, this is a place where people post their Git repositories online. Other people can download it, make suggestions, uh, help you fix it, do all sorts of very useful things. But the main point of this workshop, as I've said already, is to deal with object-oriented programming in Python. So that really brings up an important question, uh, which is what exactly is an object in Python, or what is an object more generally? Now, in Python, most of the things that you work with are actually objects. Uh, but not all of them are. But all an object is in Python is a, a thing that has properties and it has methods associated with it. So you can think of it as a container for your data that also has functionality that you can use to change the data that's stuck in that container. And it really helps you encapsulate the work that you do in logical units. Now in Python, Objects are called classes, so we're going to be working a lot with classes today. And they're created very easily with the class keyword. But we're going to get into that. We're going to work through how we create these and how we use them after we spend a little bit of time talking about Git.